Hi students, so I'm back with another question from gate 2017 exam. It's from set 2 and is a 2 marks question. Let me first read out the entire question. The read access time and the hit ratios for different caches in a memory hierarchy are as given below. Just have a look at this table. The read access time of main memory is 90 nanoseconds. Assume that the caches use the referred word first read policy and write back policy. Assume all the caches are direct mapped. Assume that the dirty bit is always zero for all blocks in the caches. In execution of a program, 60% of memory reads are from instruction fetch and 40% are for memory operand fetch. The average read access time in nanoseconds up to two decimal places is okay so this is the data that you have been given in the question there is a instruction cache and a data cache i and d stands for instruction and data so you can see on level one we have i cache and d cache the program that is to be executed is saved in the instruction cache okay and the data cache saves the data of that program Okay, which means instruction fetch will use i cache. <clears throat> Operand fetch will use d cache. Okay, also access times for read as well as the hit ratios of all these caches are given in the question. Now they are saying we are trying to execute a program in which 60% of the instructions, sorry, 60% of the reads are for fetching instruction and remaining 40% of the reads are for fetching operand. That means 60% of the reads will be from this cache, 40% of the reads will be from this cache. Also, they are only talking about reads. Uh, just let me read the question. Look, they are saying the average read access time in nanoseconds is dash. So you are required to find average, average read access time. Also, these access times are for read. Okay. And for main memory, the read access time is 90 nanoseconds for main memory. So everything is given with respect to read accesses. Now there is a line that I like to explain. Assume that the cache uses the referred word first read policy and write back policy. Referred word first read policy. What does it mean? You know, CPU generates request for a word. If that word is not present in the cache, we fetch the entire block Okay, from the next level of memory. We'll fetch the entire block containing that word. But referred word first read policy means whichever word is referred by CPU, that's called a critical word. For example, if block size is 512, say this is the block size. In block, you are having 512 words in total. And this is the word which is required by CPU. Okay. This word is called critical word. In referred word first read policy, critical word will be fetched first. Okay, that means the data which is required by CPU will be available in very small amounts of time. Now the CPU will use that data as well as in the same time the entire block will be fetched. Okay, the data transfer will keep on happening. So next thing that they are saying is and the write back policy. Now what is write back policy? For updating cache, we have two policies, write back and write through. I've discussed these policies in a great detail in my theory lectures. Please refer those lectures. Anyways, just to recap, write back means whenever we want to update the cache, say in this cache, in data cache, some word is changed. Okay. Now that change will not be reflected 
in L2 cache, you know this data which is present in L1 will also be present in L2 and will also be present in the main memory. Okay. Whenever CPU updates something here, write back says no need to update at the next levels. But write through says update it here as well as here as well as here. Anyways, for this question, the write back policy or write through policy doesn't really matter because we are only talking about reads. Okay. So it doesn't really matter how are we updating the cache. That means how are writes taken care of. Okay. So there's one more line regarding dirty bit. Assume that the dirty bit is always zero for all the blocks in the caches. Dirty bit is a bit which is maintained in cache. For example, CPU referred rather CPU write, uh, updated something in this cache. Now it has to be updated here as well as here. Okay. Dirty bit is a bit maintained for record keeping that which page in cache was updated. For example, say this is cache. This block in cache was updated. CPU just wanted to write something in this one. Now, whenever this uh, block will be deleted or this cache line will be updated, this change will be transferred to main memory also. Okay, because we don't want to lose that change. For that purpose, we maintain a dirty bit. They are saying dirty bit is always zero. This means we never write. Okay. Because if we write even once the dirty bit has to be set, but saying dirty bit is always zero is equivalent to saying that we never write. So everything here is with the respect to reads only. Okay. And most of these things that are given in question are not used in the in solving this numerical okay and dirty bit is always zero also means if there is some mess we don't need to spend any extra time if page replacement is required. Okay, let's not go that deep. Let's not complicate things. Just use this data and solve the question. So let's find out how much time will be required for accessing memory on average. 60% of the times instruction fetch is done or rather 60% of the reads are for instruction fetch. That means IE cache. Let's find out how much time is required for accessing this IE cache. You can see IE cache has a hit ratio of 0.8. That means point 0.8 into 2. Okay. Whenever there is a hit in I cache, two nanoseconds are required. So 0.8 or 80% of times two nanoseconds are required. After that, we have L2 cache. Whenever there is a miss here, whenever there is a miss in this cache, we refer L2 cache. Okay. So miss in this cache means 20% of the times. So 0.2 into 2 plus 8, 2, sorry, whenever there is a miss in this cache, that means 20% of the time. Now there can be a miss or hit in L2. Look, there is a miss in I cache. In that case, we can also face a miss in L2. Okay, so we need to consider this point 0.9. So 20% of the times when there is a miss in I cache, there can be a hit in L2 as well as there can be a miss in L2. 
ओके दिस इज फॉर एल टू हिट दिस इज फॉर एल टू मिस लुक एल टू हिट दे हैव गिवन एस पॉइंट नाइन सो दिस इज हिट एंड दिस इज मिस नाउ इन दिस केस हाउ मच टाइम इज रिक्वायर्ड यू सी फर्स्ट टू नैनो सेकेंड आर यूज फॉर डिटरमाइनिंग दैट आई कैश वॉज अ मिस सो टू नैनो सेकेंड प्लस एट नैनो सेकेंड फॉर एक्सेसिंग एल टू कैश ओके एंड इन दिस केस देर विल बी टू प्लस एट प्लस ना टू प्लस एट टू नैनो सेकेंड हेयर एट नैनो सेकेंड हेयर इन टोटल टेन नैनो सेकेंड आर यूज टू डिटरमाइन दैट इट वॉज अ मिस हेयर एज वेल एज अ मिस हेयर ओके आफ्टर दिस वील ऑल्सो एक्सेस द मेन मेमरी मेन मेमरी इज एक्सेस टाइम इज नाइनटी नैनो सेकेंड सो प्लस नाइनटी नाउ सम स्टूडेंट्स ऑलवेज हैव दिस डाउट हाउ डू वी नो वेदर टू यूज हेरार्किकल एक्सेस और नॉट वाई एम आई यूजिंग हेरार्किकल एक्सेस हेयर हाउ डू आई नो दैट टू प्लस एट हैज टू बी रिटर्न लुक these are the access times that means if you access d cash 2 nanoseconds are required if you access l2 cash 8 nanoseconds are required they haven't mentioned the time in case of a miss they haven't told you the total time in case of miss this is the access time and you will access in case of a miss okay so in case of miss 2 seconds are required to determine that there was a miss had they mentioned that in case of miss a total of say 10 nanoseconds or 4 nanoseconds are required so that is total time what whatever is the case okay so that's the reason i'm using the formula for uh, hierarchical access okay so similarly let me just write down what happens for a access or a read access in d cache so this one comes out to be 5.4 and the unit is nanoseconds this one is 3.7 and the unit is nanoseconds okay so we have seen that i cache requires this much time on average d cache requires this much time on average now you see our program uses i cash for 60% of the times and d cash for 40% of the times okay that means the total time required for reading on average will be 60% of the times you require 5.4 nanoseconds plus 40% of the times you require 3.7 nanoseconds this is the answer okay let me just calculate it 0.6 into 5.4 0.6 into 5.4 is 3.24 Point four into three point seven. This is one point four eight. So your answer is four point seven two nanoseconds. It is four point seven two nanoseconds.